thank you. Lord, we thank you for your presence in each one of our lives, Lord. We thank you for the outpouring, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you that both go hand in hand, Lord. And we thank you for this reality. And Master, we thank you for the way that you empower us, that you strengthen us, Lord, the way that you, Lord, um, uh, guide us through your spirit. And uh, may each one of us be always sensitive to this, Lord. And Father, we thank you, the call for us, Lord, for each one of us, no matter where we are and what we do, Lord, it's the same. It is to proclaim the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, Lord, to open the eyes of the blind, to set at liberty those who are in prison, Lord. And uh, yes, Father God, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Father God, we, we thank you that you've called us to be, Lord, um, messengers of hope, messengers of freedom, and also empowered us, Lord, to be carriers, Lord, of your anointing. Uh, to dispense us, Lord, of your ar aroma in every place, Lord. And I just pray that um, you will use us in that way, Lord, each and every day, God, even as we lean on you and not in our own understanding. We thank you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, welcome once again, those who uh, joined a little late. Okay, so we've been looking at uh, the principles of uh, uh, God's prosperity. Of uh, uh, so we've been looking at uh, several, uh, you know, things. We've been we're looking at several principles, um, uh, several things to apply. Really, several truths to apply. So last class we looked at how we need to honor God in our finances, and we looked at giving, and we looked at tithing and alms, and so on. And uh, we also looked at how we need to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? So leading of the Holy Spirit, many times we associate <clears throat> with, uh, with okay, so-called spiritual matters, you know, in understanding the word of God in, uh, in maybe spiritual ministry, like teaching, revelation, understanding, uh, and also, you know, in terms of power, empowering the believer to live a godly life, to say no to temptation, empowering the believer to to you know to reach out and uh, and do the things, the you know, supernatural works of God, um, to be strong in His power and might, uh, etc. So we we think of uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit on those lines, but we also know that God, who has the know-how or God who knows how everything functions, uh, even how the money market functions, how, uh, you know, business thrives, you know, uh, God knows that. So when we lean in and we hear and listen to the direction of the Holy Spirit, um, God wants to, you know, uh, fulfill his plan and purpose in our lives. And he will do that when it comes to finances, when it comes to for us dealing with money, when it comes to you know maybe investment and all those things, right? God God is interested in uh, causing a believer uh, to do well, right? And for His plans and purposes. Okay. Um, the other thing that we see, uh, let me just share the notes. Um, is yeah, here it is. So, leading of the Holy Spirit, and and on similar lines, um, you know, to receive God's prophetic word, it's in similar lines that uh, the Spirit of God would um, would uh, impart a prophetic word. God would want uh, a now word to be you know spoken to us, to be shared with us. And that word is to help us. That word is to change us. Um, maybe, you know, we could be in uh, a tough, challenging situation. And the word is to, that prophetic word is to pull us out of that, right? Pull us out of that uh, predicament or situation and release us into his plans and purposes, right? To pull us out of danger, to pull us out of need, and releases into his plans and purposes. You know, when we look at prophecy itself, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 talks about that, where Paul teaches, um, writes to the Corinthian believers, and says that um, you know, uh, prophecy edifies. It brings edification, exhortation, and comfort. You know, edification, which means builds up, exhortation, which means there is encouragement, and comfort, 
right? There is a, a, a consolation and comfort to man. So God's prophetic word does that. Okay, and uh, when we look at Second uh, Chronicles twenty twenty, we see that God's receiving God's prophetic word through whomever He sends to uh, speak that word to us, to bring that word to us, um, prospers us. Right? It causes us to thrive, cause, causes us or brings success. Right? Because it's his word. It's not the person. Right? It's not the, the person whom God uses. Um, well, of course, that person needs to be faithful and all that. But it is his word, which is received in faith and with diligence and acted upon which brings uh, which brings that uh, which bring which prospers the person right so we see that uh, paul writing to timothy and reminding him to wage the good warfare with what we know that in Ephesians he talks about the, you know the armor of god and so on but in Timothy, he when he writes to uh, Timothy in Ephesus, First uh, Timothy, we see that Paul writing and saying that uh, by these prophecies, by what was spoken over you, you wage the good warfare. Okay, so it, if it is a battle, you use the prophetic word in order to win that battle. Okay, so um, I'm reading First Timothy chapter one and verse eighteen says, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith and a good conscience, uh, and so on. Right. So wage the good for warfare, having faith and a good conscience. Um, and before that, he says, you know, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, with them, with these prophetic words, you wage the good warfare. So receiving God's prophetic word and <coughs> acting upon God's prophetic word is very important for us as believers. Um, it, it is a very important principle uh, in God's uh, prosperity. Like when it comes to God prospering us, this is another way by which he prospers us. He gives the prophetic word. Now, the prophetic word itself, um, you know, it, it, it would come at the right time. It would probably change the, the way the person is thinking. Maybe the person is thinking all negative, is very discouraged, is down, is unable to do anything, right? Um, and I just want to share one experience that I had, you know, in when I was working for this company that... Uh, um you know there was a lot of a uh, lot of stress because of uh, the targets that were there uh, we had to you know i was in sales and we had to uh, you know achieve those targets month after month after month and some of these targets were weekly so we had to achieve those weekly targets um yeah i think somebody raised a question somebody raised a hand rosalind you have a question you raised your hand Okay. Um, okay, if you have a question, you can ask or you can put it on the chat. Okay, I'm not sure if it was by mistake. Anyway, so you can feel free to put it on the chat as well, right? Okay. Okay, so yeah, so I was um, in the, in this organization working and there was a lot of, lot of pressure and, um, uh, you know, and I was uh, I'm really struggling, really struggling to... Um, struggling in the sense uh, I was crippled by fear right I remember one day where I was uh, uh, you know one day I, I I just could not work at all because I was thinking you know what would happen what would happen if I did not achieve my targets what would happen uh, you know probably I'll lose my job and so on so I was so paralyzed by fear right? so paralyzed by fear that I could not even do anything about it. I remember sitting in the office the whole day, um, and this, you know, not being able to phone client, call up clients, not being able to go out and do anything. You know, so paralyzed by fear. Now the prophetic word can come like uh, a shaft of bright light during that time. You know, 
it can just come at that right moment and it does what uh, uh, exactly that you know it opens the prison door for someone who is stuck in a place unable to move out unable to do anything it opens that prison door right? the prophetic word of god um alive it's now it's real so powerful right very really changes the very um the very atmosphere and that is what you know god's um word which is quickened to my heart at that time did when i began to speak that out when i began to sing it out then all this oppression you know that left all that fear left right so receiving god's word prophetic word is very very uh, important it's an important principle okay so let's look at a couple of verses we we can look at uh, uh, second chronicles and um, chapter 20 verse 20 okay second chronicles 20 and verse 20 so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness wilderness of tekoa and as they went out jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah and you inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god and you shall be established believe his prophets and you shall prosper believe his prophets and you shall pros- prosper obviously the prophets who speak the heart and mind of god uh, and and the word which comes from god's heart and mind uh, which changes right brings change for the better believe his prophets and you shall prosper okay then uh, ezra which is uh, just turn the pages to the next book ezra which is uh, chapter 6 and verse 14 okay ezra chapter 6 verse 14 um so this was you know the ministry of the prophets in action right this is what we see uh when they were rebuilding the temple so the elders of the jews built and they prospered through the prophesying of hagai the prophet and zechariah the son of iddo and they built and finished it according to the commandment of the god of israel according to the command of cyrus darius and artaxerxes king of persia okay so it's talking about the temple work uh, rebuilding of the temple work which was done and here we read about two prophets that is hagai and uh, Haggai the prophet and Zechariah and they were prophesying speaking the word of god speaking the timely now word of god speaking forth which is prophesying and it says that the people prospered okay so pre- people were so in this case prosperity is that they had the means and they went about successfully completing the building of the temple right so we see that here so they they were successful in it right so we so we see uh, prosperity is god inspired divinely inspired increase uh, in it's divinely inspired growth is divinely inspired success right through divinely inspired means and for divinely inspired uh, purposes right so that is what we we have seen uh, we have studied right so so this is what happened here okay so we see the prophetic word in action we see the 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 people who were prophesying in action and the people prospered it says so um so we don't know the nature of the prophecy but it was probably strategies it was probably you know words that uh, encourage them day to day um not to give up and uh, whatever you know that but it it cr- brought it prospered them right brought Uh, success okay um so that is uh, th- that is something that we have so we we can open up our lives like to the god's prophetic word okay so having mentioned that uh, we also need to understand that uh, you know in line with the prophetic of course we're going to be learning about the prophetic um and we learned about it in the holy spirit class as well um the gifts of the spirit we learned about prophecy but i just want to remind us that when it comes to the prophetic word you know as new testament believers we are called we are instructed to test the prophetic word okay uh, we are instructed to test test the prophetic word um not despise 
the prophetic uh, prophetic word but test it and keep it okay test it which means if it's good if it passes the test what is the test for to find out if it's genuine right if it is from god god is the source right a test um, uh, test the word that you know that there is no mixture that there is no flesh involved <laughs> sorry so because we know that the god's uh, that god's prophetic word is uh, is uh, the word that comes from god is is pure untainted powerful but we also know that the that the vessel the human being is limited right um fleshly and uh, well is a work in progress and therefore might make mistakes right so therefore um the principle that we have uh, instruction that we have in scripture is to test every prophetic word or test all prophecies right um which we see in second uh, sorry first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse verses uh, 20 21 22 right do not despise prophecies test all things hold fast what is good okay do not despise prophecies test all things hold fast what is good so when it comes as a you know especially in the area of finances you know we're not we're talking about that um so especially if it comes in the area of finances test all things now don't despise the prophecy test it uh test it with the word of god test it with the character and the nature of god will god speak in, in such a way um test it to see if it is in conformity with the truth of god's word right if it conforms to god's word um or if it's blatantly you know contradicting god's word also <clears throat> test to see whether you know if it's god's pattern of working in your lives right There's so many things that we can we can test uh, these uh, these prophecies so we we test it and verse 21 says hold fast to what is good you know when you test and then there's a witness of the holy spirit in your spirit you know there is a there's a confirmation there is a sense of peace about it then hold fast to what is good right uh, when you know that it is, this is the truth itself uh, hold fast you know don't um, don't waver right be unwavering hold fast and uh, like Timothy said I mean sorry Paul said to Timothy use it to fight the good fight right sometimes there could be opposition you know and god's prophetic word comes at the right time at the right place use it uh, against unbelief use it against accusations use it against you know anything um, the situation seems um you know uh, seems like mountains right so use that um, and it says here uh, hold fast to what is good don't let go of that okay don't let it slip out hold fast to what it what is good okay um the next principle that we see is for us to for us who have access to wisdom knowledge and counsel to get wisdom knowledge and counsel okay so wisdom refers to the ability to use the information that we have Right. the ability to use knowledge to apply knowledge so knowledge would be you know uh, information put together information about a topic information about a subject right it's it's information right put together arranged together and uh, maybe it's also through experience it's also you know uh, it's also something that is uh, maybe categorized and and set in order in order to make sense set in place to in order to make sense so um knowledge uh, is important and then wisdom is important wisdom comes um uh, the fear of the lord is the beginning of it is the starting point of it wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge you know knowing when to apply where that's wisdom and counsel counsel being again uh, uh, uh wisdom or uh, you know uh, ways truth that is um, a- a- applicable at the right time in order to solve something in order to sort out something in order to you know bring a solution to something um, so 
knowledge, wisdom, and counsel. So the Bible is not against, uh, scriptures are not against that, right? It's not against wisdom, godly wisdom, godly counsel. It's not against information or knowledge, right? Um, if you look at a few verses, then we will understand that, that the Bible is not uh, against that. Right? Well, there is something called worldly wisdom. There is something called selfish ambition. Um, well, the Bible, of course, warns us about that. Uh, but godly wisdom and, uh, you know, uh, and understanding and knowledge is something that uh, we are encouraged to receive, encouraged to get. Okay, let's look at Proverbs 8. Okay, this is uh, slightly lengthy, you know, like we have 21 verses, but it talks about wisdom, right? Which means wisdom, you know, in the context of finances, wisdom in the context of running something, um, running meaning, uh, you know, maybe if there is a school, if there is a college, if there is a, you know, if there is a shop, a, a, Anything, you know, if there's a business, uh, uh, wisdom enables uh, us to do it well, right? Um, so let's look at uh, wisdom. Proverbs 8, verses 1 to 21. Does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her head on the top of the high hill, besides the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice to the sons of men. O you simple ones, understand prudence. And you fools, be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I speak of excellent things. And from the opening of my lips will come right things. For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. So you see, you know, it just qualifies um, what wisdom is. You know, it's not something that is camouflaging as um, sin. <coughs> you know, many times we have access to media, we have so much of uh, information and uh, you know, advice and wisdom that is out there. Um, but you know, is it something that is righteous? You know, so it says that um, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. Okay, um, They are all plain to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. So again, another qualifier. Right? It's, it comes with the fear of the Lord. Uh, there's no pride, there's no arrogance, there's no perversity in it. Right? Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the paths of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Right? In fact, the whole chapter is um, about it, uh, about wisdom and uh, you know what what wisdom does, and it's kind of you know figuratively talks about wisdom as a person. Um, so. So this is something that we see here. You know, um, uh, the objective of in wisdom and the end result of wisdom, right? Uh, and and uh, and the entire process of wisdom. Uh, it talks about counsel, talks about understanding, uh, strength, and uh, how wisdom enables rulers 
uh, who to decree justice, right, to to bring forth justice, kings to reign, and so on. And uh, well, if if one has a diligent heart in order to seek wisdom, uh, when one has the fear of the Lord, then wisdom uh, is their possession. You know, there is there is wisdom. We also see in the book of James where where the Lord says. Um, where we are in, where we are encouraged, um, where we see, you know, if uh, James one and verse five, if any any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. And let not let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, because it's not in faith, right? So the thing is that we have access to this kind of wisdom. You know, you see the wonderful quality of wisdom, right? What wisdom can accomplish in a person's life, and how it it you know it it's, it it says very plainly that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth. Okay, verse twenty one that I may fill their treasury so wisdom does open door to to wealth and riches okay, wisdom applied um, wisdom followed through so it comes from God right and God's heart you know um, when it comes to wealth and prosperity you know for people you know God's heart God is not against it God is in fact God wants to uplift you know the uh, the ones who with need so, so we see this, and also we do not have to hesitate to ask if we think we lack wisdom, right? So wisdom enables one, accomplishes this, enables one to accomplish this or accomplish this. But God, when it comes to you know people lacking wisdom, God's heart is when we ask in faith, when we ask unwaveringly, um, His desire is to give wisdom. So that it, the wisdom can accomplish all that, you know, it's not just to make decisions about uh, where to go. It's not just decisions about what should I preach. It's not just decisions about okay, what song should I, you know, uh, add in my set list. It's not just those things, but but it is also about very practical things. You know, it's also about very day to day things that God is more than willing to give his wisdom. And we see the gift of the Spirit also as word of wisdom, which is more in line with counsel. Right? Okay, let's look at a few more verses. Uh, maybe if you can just open up to Proverbs and yeah, we'll just go one verse after the other. So Proverbs 11 and verse 14 says, where there is no counsel, now this is the negative side of it. Okay, If there is no counsel or godly wisdom, um, the people fall, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Okay, so so it talks about okay, you might say, okay, this person was sincere but was not wise. Right? Um, the thing is, uh, with all sincerity, you know, God will God will speak, you know, if the posture of that person's heart is sincere and and in faith and, and in humility, well, God will make sure that. That person has access to wisdom, right? But but it's for us. It's up to us whether we can we whether we want to accept wisdom or reject it. So having a good understanding of wisdom will enable us to discern and and receive and accept it, right? Uh, otherwise, we might reject and say, okay, oh, this is worldly. Oh, this is you know this is sin, uh, you know, and not be discerning so we, we kind of reject the wisdom that God brings across a path okay so uh, 11 verse 14 where there is no counsel the people fall but in the multitude of counselors there is safety in chapter 12 and verse 15 um, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes but he who heeds counsel is wise okay so again contradicting I mean, I mean, uh, contrasting what wisdom does and what would happen if there is lack of wisdom. 
okay um, chapter 15 verse 22 uh, without counsel plans go awry but in the multitude of counselors they are established so um, again telling us you know we we might have plans we might plan <coughs> in a certain way um, but when there is counsel when there is wisdom then plans are established right what does it mean when we have a multitude of counselors it means that people who speak or who who share godly counsel now in in the multitude uh, when we have such an environment where people share the council and then the plans are established they are made firm they are you know we are able to carry out okay uh, but if without counsel the plans go or it could be a good plan but uh, you need wisdom to execute it right so without wisdom our plans go or okay um, let's look at chapter 19 and verse 20 and also verse 27, I think. Yeah. Proverbs 19 and verse 20. Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. Okay, so the importance of, you know, when it comes to receiving um, and listening, a very important quality that is required is humility okay? and discernment, right? Humility because you're in a place to receive. Like you're saying, okay, uh, I want to take it. We're not, you know, we're not filled with pride to say, okay, I know everything and, and reject it, right? We're in a place to receive. We're in a place of humility and saying, okay, I need this. I need to know uh, I'm not there yet, right? Uh, you you understand your true state. Okay, I, I, I might be knowing a lot, but then this is something that I need to know. Okay, so a place of humility where I'm teachable. Okay, at the same time, discernment. Okay, at the same time, discernment. So both are required for us to listen, for us to receive instruction. So what, what will that accomplish? That you may be wise in your latter days you know, even as even as you progress in age um, you will be wise right and uh, um, and uh, wisdom will accomplish what it needs to accomplish in your life okay verse 27 cease listening to instruction my son and you will stray from the words of knowledge you know now instruction is not something that we are all very happy with you know because um, you know, uh, it's it's telling you to do something. To instruct it is to say, you know, a typical instruction would, would be like, okay, go left, take five steps, take a right here, right? And uh, many times we'd like to avoid that, right? But scripture warns us, says, cease listening. If you're, if you stop listening to instruction, obviously, you know, it's referring to, again, disqualifying the instruction which leads to life, the instruction which which stays, you know, or leads in the paths of righteousness. Right? Okay, so cease listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. You know, we will drift away, walk away from the words of knowledge. Okay, so which means that we distance ourselves. You know, we don't realize it. Okay, we stray away from the words of knowledge um, if we distance our, or if we stop listening to instructions okay so that again calls for a heart of humility and a heart that's teachable okay now all this we are studying in the context is uh, prosperity financial stewardship financial prosperity and how God prospers his people you see, this is a very important uh, principle. So maybe we we did not think of, you know, we did not link that, you know, make that connection between prosperity and uh, you know, wisdom and counsel and understanding instructions. But there is a link here. Right? And uh, 
so when we stop listening to instruction we stray away we drift away we don't even realize that and but we are the ones who are uh, move distancing ourselves from receiving instruction receiving the words of knowledge sorry right okay um one more uh, verse which is uh, proverbs 20 and verse 18 okay proverbs 20 and verse 18 says plans are established by counsel by wise counsel where wage or again establishing of plans by uh, wise counsel okay so so we see all these principles that are there okay let's just uh, kind of quickly review uh, then we started by looking at you know uh, the principles for divine prosperity um, we, we 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 started by saying okay uh, we want to prosper we might have an understanding of prosperity but then in carrying out the task okay maybe if it's work maybe it's uh, maybe it's business maybe it's something that you need to do uh, which god has established you know given to you in carrying it out we if we are doing it with a with a mixture of you know maybe uh, instruction in scripture and also worldly worldly things worldly values worldly standards then it does not result in the good that god intends for us right so we dedicate our work dedicate our business but when we operate how do we operate we need to operate with the principles of god so that's how we started so we looked at you know how um, we need to put god first right we need to do what god wants us to be doing which means you are close to god's heart um, you know god says that he will guide us with his eye right so you know, how close do you need to be to be able to perceive that right guide us with his eye so yeah so god doing what god wants us to be doing to practice righteousness right to do the right thing which which brings us to a right standing with god um to practice righteousness then we looked at work itself you know the the diligence with which we work that work is a uh, a vehicle for god to prosper us our work is like uh it's like a it's like a you know it's like a tap it's like a connection it's like a, you know a pathway that god provides for us through which god provides for us and through which god provides for us financially through which god prospers us financially so um so the quality of work also matters that there should be diligence in the work then we looked at uh, faith you know faith is a very important principle that that we believe god we believe that god is who he says he is and we come to him in faith right uh, so f- when it comes to faith we know that we believe even before we see it even before we receive it that's faith right we don't we believe that we will see the manifestation of it we believe that we receive it and it's to be you know it's the evidence of of things that that you you know that uh, like uh, what hebrew says that uh, it is the evidence of things that are hoped for so it is the evidence itself right so faith using the principles of faith so what are those principles of faith when it comes to declaring you know we looked at that uh, the next one speaking the god's word of prosperity over our, our lives you know with this which is again uh, a way of uh, expressing faith you know you speak you declare it or we are intentionally you know speak that out uh then we looked at honoring god in our finances you know with our money you know it's not something that is closed from god but it's open to god you know, he has access to it so um how do we honor god with our finances you know god has talked about uh, god has laid in in scripture about tithes uh, principles about tithes and we looked at tithes you know we uh, we saw that how it is not discontinued you know uh, uh, why do people not tithe wrong understanding maybe maybe fear of being manipulated we looked at tithe we looked at giving we looked at arms right? and we saw that uh, you know all this god instituted uh, and and oh, a man paid uh, or gave tithes even before the law was in place so it came from a place of relationship rather than instruction or commandment you know that's how it started that's how it originated right so uh, it is uh, it is to do with your relationship with god 
Um, so honoring God in our finances. Then we looked at listening to the Holy Spirit. And today we looked at, you know, how we need to receive God's prophetic word, um, wisdom, counsel, understanding, knowledge, right? All that uh, are God's ways uh, by which he prospers us. Okay, so we looked at that. Okay, so we'll stop here. And uh, next class, we're going to look at the last chapter. So that's going to be a very practical one. We're going to look at, uh, you know, stewardship, uh, and, and all these uh, topics that are listed here, we're going to look at that. And uh, some of it is uh, like uh, very practical. So we're going to look at, uh, um, you know, saving investments, uh, etc. Now these are over, you know, it's like uh, basic uh, principles, basic uh, ideas, right? Um, uh, but when it comes to the practical application of it, you know, we need to go into the details of it. Okay, you need to go into the details of it. And we know that when it comes to currency, when it comes to banking, when it comes to, uh, you know, all these things, it differs from place to place. You know, it differs from nation to nation. So, uh, so this is just a basic principle, but you need to go and get that knowledge, get the know-how before you actually you know, uh, maybe make an investment and so on, okay? Uh, get more details out of that. But these are basic things. So we're going to you know, look at these things, you know, starting with uh, stewardship, okay? So, yeah, so we look at it uh, next class and, uh, and we'll go through all this, okay? So we'll stop right here. Um, just want to remind us that there will be two quizzes, one, we'll have by uh, maybe end of this month or beginning of April and uh, one more quiz by the third week of uh, April. Uh, that'll be the final one. Okay, and both the scores will be, will add up to your final score. Okay, and uh, the quizzes will be, for the online students, of course, the quiz will be, um, you know, the announced on the stream, your class stream. So uh, please be mindful of that and uh, uh, go ahead and uh, and it'll also have a submission date right so and for the e-learning students the quiz will be uh, uploaded and uh, on the chat and you will you will you know know about it and of course the end of the term is the date for submission of the quizzes okay okay so we'll stop here thank you god bless we'll meet again bye bye